And so we should be able to now test and run our Streamlit application. So we should be able to type in Streamlit run app.py and it should open up a browser window with our uh, simple test application. So it opened up the window here and you can see Streamlit demo. It has All right, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna walk through how to set up our very own dedicated Python environment to build Streamlit applications in. And in this video, we're going to download Anaconda, which we're gonna to use to set up our dedicated Python environment. We're going to then create that Python environment, and then we are gonna install the needed Streamlit application and then test the application to make sure our environment is working properly. So if you haven't already installed Anaconda, go ahead and navigate to this website here, anaconda.com, download Anaconda. You can go up to the very top here where it says free download, click there, and depending on your uh, OS that you're running, it's going to dictate what shows up in this download link here. So if you're running on Windows, you'll get the Windows option. If you're running on Mac like myself, you'll get the Mac installer options. So go ahead and download Anaconda, pause the video, run the installer, and then open up the Anaconda application. All right, so I'm gonna take it that you pause the video and you've installed Anaconda and opened it up. So I've already have it installed. I'm gonna go down here to my toolbar and select Anaconda. And you'll see a screen similar to this here. And what we're interested in is the environments tab over here. So if I click environments, you can see the base environment, which is what comes with Anaconda when you initially install it. And then I have an AWS environment where I, I run some AWS projects and then an OpenAI environment where I build out some OpenAI based projects. So what we're gonna do is build a environment dedicated for building out Streamlit projects. Now we could do all of this in the user interface here by going down here, clicking create, and then going and running a search for the different things that uh, we want to install in our environment. But we're gonna do everything here through the command line. So I already have a application or a demo uh, project set up in VS Code. So you can use your editor of choice. I'm gonna go ahead and click VS Code. And I just have a simple uh, app.py file here this is a very simple streamlit application, nothing really special going on. It's just got some dummy data in here so that I can test and ensure my environment is functioning properly. Now, what I'm gonna do, well, if you don't already have the terminal open, you can go up to the top at VS Code here and click new terminal and a terminal window will show up for you, like in my, um, like in my environment here. So I am going to now create my conda environment. So I'm gonna go down to the terminal, type in conda create dash n, and I'm gonna call this environment streamlit underscore env. And then I'm going to state the version of Python that I want to install here in this environment. And then I'm going to click enter. And also I added the uh, yes flag there so it doesn't prompt me. It's now gonna go out, download and collect the different packages download the packages, and then build out our uh, Anaconda environment here. So we're done uh, installing and building out our environment here. Now we have to activate the environment. So we, when we're running any commands, it's in the context of that particular Python environment. And this gives us a way to isolate our different uh, Python environments based on the types of projects that we're building out. I am going to type in conda, .act or conda activate then I'm gonna type in my environment name, streamlit underscore env, and hit enter. And what you'll notice here is at the front of my terminal of my command line here, you can see it says streamlit underscore env, and that tells us we successfully now activated our, our conda environment here. But now we need to install the needed packages in our environment so that streamlit will f function for us. What I'm going to do is type in pip list. So I want to list and see what Python packages are already installed in this lot or in this particular environment here. So I'm going to hit enter. And you can only you can see we have pip, and then we have a couple of other uh, basic Python libraries that are included here. What we need to do now is ensure that we get streamlit to show up in our list of packages in this environment. So I'm going to type in pip install 
and then I am going to type in Streamlit and hit enter. So it'll go out, it's collecting the packages, downloading the packages, and then it's going to install the Streamlit package within our uh, Conda environment here so that when we run the Streamlit command that our application will function improperly here. So this will take a, maybe a few minutes and then we'll get, it'll complete and give us a blank terminal. So there we go. Um, so now what I am going to do here is actually try to run the Streamlit applications. Actually, the first, let's check and see if Streamlit's in that list of uh, packages. So you see more packages in here than we requested. And those are dependencies that Streamlit depends on to run. So we can see Streamlit here. It's installed. And so we should be able to now test and run our Streamlit application. So we should be able to type in Streamlit run app.py. And it should open up a browser window with our uh, simple test application. So it opened up the window here and you can see Streamlit demo. It has some, you know, test chat uh, outputs here. And then over here into the sidebar, I put some other widgets in here just to prove that the application is working. So that's really all there is to it to getting your own dedicated uh, environment set up within Conda to build out Streamlit applications. So there's not a whole lot to it. So now what I can do is build out any Streamlit application by using this particular environment here. So if you found this information useful, feel free to click like, subscribe. Also, if you've got any questions about anything that you saw, I was unclear on something, feel free to cut up, put a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Also, down in the description, I've put a link to the GitHub repo just as a reference. So if you're unsure about a particular command that I ran, you can just visit that GitHub repo link and use that as a reference. So again, thanks for joining me. Hopefully you found this helpful and see you in the next video.